quick question later, Hall. Um, what we heard last year after the last election is that actually early voting was up, despite the fact that there were fewer days. More people managed to vote in them, and so they're saying that that is proof that it did not, in fact, discourage people from voting, that people came on and voted anyway. What's your response to that? Well, you know, that's similar to the idea that uh, some people say it snowed on Christmas, so that means when it snows, it's Christmas. Because more people showed up, because much more effort was used to try to get people to squeeze into this smaller period of time, and people suffered a lot more inconvenience in order to exercise their constitutional right, does not mean that was a success. That means the people bore the burden and spent immeasurable resources, which is what the examination should have been done. How much were the wait times online? What did that calculate into lost earnings and inconvenience to people should have been the measurement that was taken. So uh, just making uh, those kind of anecdotal remarks don't really paint the full picture. And again, if the shortened period, many more people voted, then let's go back to the snow on Christmas, Christmas means snow, then let's go back to that and say, if that many more people voted in that shortened period, then what do we do? We just, I guess, limit it to three days, and then that many more people would vote using that logic? I don't think it works that way. And again, I, I think to be reasonable about it, there was no problem with us when we had the extended period. We should go back to that period and allow people to have a positive voting experience, not exclude them, but include them, as Representative Lucas said. Yes, sir. Does this bill have a chance of uh, passing with the Republican-controlled legislature? Which bill? Are you uh, either one of them. Either one of them? Mm -hmm. I think the one that has the best chance is the one that appeals most to the citizens who are going to write and communicate with their legislators. We know already that the majority made these amendments, made us one of the most oppressive states in the nation regarding voting and voter participation. And as, as was indicated by the previous question, as a result, people kind of fought back, so to say, and said, despite what restrictions you're trying to put on me, I'm going to fight through the process, the long line, the short period, and try to vote anyway. If they're going to be user friendly, if they're going to be responsive to what the voters are saying, they will pass both of these. And if we value our colleges and universities and our students and our faculty and all the graduates, and, and we've got many of them in our General Assembly who are public and private college university graduates, I don't think any individual one of them would say people from my college or university should be excluded from voting. So uh, these bills have a chance if the public gets behind them. We already know what, how we got to the situation. The majority perceived it to be an advantage to them to maintain power. We want the people to have the power. No more questions? All right, well, thank you, and uh, these members will be available afterwards, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you.